Welcome, welcome, welcome to Walking Through Glass, the podcast with your host, Dr. Dina C. Brown. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday. So excited to come to you on this Wednesday. And I do want to start with saying that I did not record a daily dose of Dr. Vitamin D on Tuesday. Why? It's because I needed to get my mind right to be able to bring you a message not only that was authentic, but that that was actually grounded in um, what I would call positivity. Because again, we all need a little bit of sunshine and sometimes we do kind of have those cloudy days and cloudy days was kind of one of those days for me yesterday. So I've been spending some extra time just in solitude to, to process what is really going on. And on today's episode of walking through glass, the podcast, and in your daily dose of Dr. Vitamin D, I want to talk to you a little bit about putting your mask on and doing it unapologetically. We all have demands on our schedule and in our mind, we play these record recordings that say they need, they want, I must, what if, and we, they go on and on and on and on. And oftentimes those have nothing to do with our needs. And I will tell you that I have become more attuned to what my needs are and operating in that space so that I can truly live my very best life today. And that I will continue to love myself on purpose with purpose. But in order to do that, it means that you have to set some boundaries and you have to give yourself some guidelines and rules. When we think of boundaries, we sometimes place that on other people are not recognizing my boundaries. Other people are not. And then we have this list. But the truth of the matter is, is that we are not honoring our own boundaries with ourselves. And I knew in the last week or so that I was nearing crash point. I can tell because I felt mentally and physically unbalanced and misaligned. And there's a whole host of reasons and rationales why. And even after meditating and marinating on what was going on, I still found myself just kind of in just like a brain fog and a little funk at some points in time. But I was really excited because walking through glass, the launch kicked off on June 8th, which happened to be International Best Friends Day, which is why I did it that day. And I got the chance to kick off this new season and these live conscious conversation talks with some amazing women. And if you want to hear a little bit more about that, Definitely listen to Monday's episode, but there's going to be more information to follow. Now, let's talk about putting your mask on. You see, on Thursday, I was running a little bit low. On Friday, I was still running a little bit low. But I knew Friday that I probably needed to shut it down and rest. But what did I do? I went to a friend's end of the year party because that's the annual party that they do with the kids. But I realized that although it's a family event and the kids and especially Xavier was definitely going to be there, I didn't need to go, but I went anyway, knowing that my battery was on low. And then when I went, I could have went for a hot minute, but I didn't. I stayed far longer than I originally decided I was going to stay. And far longer than what I needed to stay. So Friday, I already knew. And knowing I had to prep for Saturday and knowing that I was going to be pouring out and that um, being highly intuitive and empathic in nature 
Anytime people are hurt and broken, I pick up a lot of emotions and feelings and it's very draining for me. So knowing that my battery was already on low, knowing, knowing I was going into a high emotional state for Saturday and the excitement that I had for myself, because this was an event that was just really beginning to kick off this new season of my life, I should have got rest. Did I? No. Okay. Totally wasn't listening to the concept of putting my mask on first. So again, slept that morning, got up, was struggling. Now, you know, when we have an event, that's our event. We are so excited. We're ready to go. We can jump up. We can put makeup on. I didn't even have the power, the energy, the effort to paint my face. So I thought, hmm, I'm going to go au natural. Because, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll go with the vibe of the, of the morning. But that wasn't the real reason why I didn't have makeup on. I said, I was so tired. I was so dragging. I felt so off. And I felt like I couldn't really breathe. So, pulled everything together. And kicked off the launch. Again, phenomenal event. Great reports and, and information pouring back from that. But I didn't just have the one event, which was mine. My niece's birthday party was also immediately following. So I had to wrap up everything that I was doing. Still completely fatigued and exhausted. Feeling that uh, maybe I might be coming down a little bit with something. And proceeded to the next event. Went home in enough time to drop some things off. Grab Xavier. Headed on the highway. Barely could stay awake on the highway. Thankfully and prayerfully that Xavier's a driver and knew that he could drive us home. Again, still in a state of choking the very life from my present. You see, I was exhausted. But the tape in my mind was, gotta go. Gotta make sure, you know, I show my face. Need to be present for And all the time ignoring the fact that I wasn't being present for myself. But if that wasn't enough, got to the party, mingled a little bit, left, went outside in my car and slept. I had to because I was so tired. I was delirious. I was nauseous. So I also knew that, oh, still not feeling the best. Got in the car, literally probably passed out. In a parking parking lot, not saying that was the safest thing, but it was the right thing that I had to do at that moment because I literally couldn't go anymore. Does that sound familiar? Are you pushing yourself to those limits? Are you doing these types of things because you're being any and everything for everybody, but you're being not what you need for yourself? Well, if that wasn't enough, I said, okay, Xavier, slept for a little bit. It's time to go. Thankfully, I had the mindfulness to allow him to drive home. Thank God for a driving teenager. Drove us home because why? I had to get ready for event number three. Mind you, I don't feel very well. I'm exhausted. I feel completely empty. And yet in my mind, I just kept thinking, I got to get ready. I have to go to this particular event and I really wanted to go to my girlfriend's 39th all white party my white outfit came in I spent days looking for the perfect outfit and I said I gotta go and when I got home and I sat on that couch I realized enough is enough enough is enough and it was at that point I realized I had to put my mask on so that I can breathe I was choking the very life out of my present my brain was tired I was physically tired and I still felt like I was coming down with a little bit of something I literally ate I looked down at my feet my feet were swollen my head was congested I was completely exhausted and yet I thought I was getting ready to go out and celebrate. And at that moment, I realized two things. Number one, 
if I didn't make a conscious decision to choose me in that moment, that I was going to literally crack. My temper was getting shorter. My patience was wearing more thin. And I literally felt horrid. And so I did the only thing I could possibly do is that I chose me. And I said, you know what? You're not going to go. You're not going to go. You'll make your apologies later, but you cannot go. And then I did the second best thing. My niece, who was having her sweet 16 party the next day. So in my mind, I thought, I've been going Friday. I'm going to be going all day Saturday. And then I needed to drive to the high desert on Sunday and be there all day for my niece's party. And all I could see ahead of me was literally this just kind of desert with no oasis of peace and serenity for myself because it wasn't going to stop. It was going to get home late after going out, celebrating, getting up early the next day. Again, another full day of events with a company with driving, mind you, a few hours of driving and zero rest. And I realized I couldn't do it. I literally couldn't do it. And so I just said, I'm not. I'm going to choose me. I'm going to put my mask on. I'm going to buckle my seatbelt and I'm going to sit myself down somewhere. So I literally slept Saturday evening, got up for a few hours and then went back to sleep on Sunday, got up for a few hours and see I'm an early riser. I used to get up between 4.30 and 5 every day, whether it's Monday or Sunday. And I got up, did some reading, did some prayer meditating, and then realized I'm so tired. My equilibrium is off. I laid down and I slept again late into the afternoon. And in my mind, I said, I'm going to church. It's Pentecost Sunday. I got to go. But you know what? I have a sacred temple too. And I needed to learn and do a better job of honoring it. So I slept, got up briefly because I hadn't eaten to go get something to eat, got physically kind of ill, even going to eat, came back home and slept again into the evening. I don't even remember the last time I have slept so much. And then woke up Monday for work, still feeling out of sorts and not in the best condition, but continue to move anyway. We must do a better job of putting our mask on. We must do a better job of choosing ourselves and saying, you know what? I need this. I need me right now. I want this for me. I will do this for me. What I've learned is that before I can ask someone else to consider me, I have to consider me. Because if I'm so busy running around putting everybody's mask on and they're good and they're breathing and I don't have anyone to look back and say, did you put yours on? That's a problem. But here's the problem. It's not that no one considered me. It's that I didn't consider me. So that is your challenge today on this Wednesday Wednesday. Is that you take an opportunity today to put your mask on unapologetically, without guilt, without explanation. I charge you to choose you. First, intentionally. That's a big charge. And I'm not saying it's easy, but I know that you can do it. And that is your daily dose of Dr. Vitamin D for the day. And know that you 
can listen and find Walking Through Glass, the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Music, um, Google Music Play, and of course on Podbean, our host. And if this message resonates with you and you know somebody else that needs to hear it, I charge and challenge you, you to share it. Share it. Because, again, as women, we sometimes carry the brunt, the brunt of it on our own shoulders. And we think that we're alone, but we're not. You are not alone on this journey. We may be on different paths, but we are not alone. I'm here for you. And remember, come and get your daily dose of Dr. Vitamin D Monday through Friday. Because everybody needs a little bit more sunshine in their life. Thank you for listening. And even more thanks for sharing. Have a phenomenal day. Bye-bye.